The Samantron or Samandron Greek, Samantron or Samantarian, Samantarian also called a Xylon Xylon Romanian, Toica, Russian, Bilo Bilo, Bulgarian, Macedonian, Serbian, Klepalo Klepalo, Arabic, Nakus is a percussion instrument used in monasteries to summon the monastics to prayer or at the start of a procession. <laughs> Origins and use The instrument comes in three chief varieties, a long wooden plank held in the player's left hand and struck with a wooden mallet in the right, a larger, heavier, fixed timber block suspended by chains and struck by one or two mallets, and a fixed metal variety, often horseshoe shaped and struck by a metal mallet. The portable samantron is made of a long, well-planed piece of timber, usually heart of maple, but also beech, from 12 feet meters and upwards in length, by 1.5 feet 46 centimeters broad, and 9 inches 23 centimeters in thickness. Of Levantine and Egyptian origin, its use flourished in Greece and on Mount Athos before spreading among Eastern Orthodox in what are now Bulgaria, Romania, Moldova, Serbia, Montenegro, Bosnia and Herzegovina and the Republic of Macedonia. It both predates and substitutes for bells first introduced to the East in 865 by the Venetians, who gave a dozen to Michael III, being used to call worshippers to prayer. The metal variety is made of iron or brass, Hagiosidera Hagiosidera, Klepalo Klepalo, formed of slightly curved metal plates, these give out a sound not unlike that of a gong, in the portable wooden form, at the center of the instrument's length, each edge is slightly scooped out to allow the player to grasp it by the left hand, while he or she holds a small wooden or sometimes iron mallet in the right, with which to strike it in various parts and at various angles, eliciting loud, somewhat musical sounds, krausma krausma. Although simple, the instrument nonetheless produces a strong resonance and a variety of different intonations, depending on the thickness of the place struck and the intensity of the force used, so that quite subtle results can be obtained. A metal samantron, smaller than those of wood, is usually hung near the entrance of the Catholican, the monastery's main church. In the traditional monastic ritual, before each service the assigned player takes a wooden samantron and, standing before the west end of the Catholican, strikes on it three hard and distinct blows with the mallet. He then proceeds round the outside of the church, turning to the four quarters and playing on the instrument by striking blows of varying force on different parts of the wood at uneven intervals, always winding up the tune with three blows similar to those at the beginning. Where there is a metal samantron, it is customary to strike it after the wooden one has been played. The samantron is sounded every midnight for night offices midnight office and matins, this is done by the candle lighter, candeliptus candelaptus. The samantra are usually suspended by chains from a peg in the proalian porch of the Catholican or perhaps outside the refectory door, or on a tree in the courtyard. History While continuing in daily use at monasteries and sometimes featuring at funerals for their deep notes sounded at long intervals, as well as at other services, Samantra have also played a part in Orthodox history. Their origin has been traced to at least the beginning of the 6th century, when the Samantron had replaced the trumpet as the agent of convocation in the monasteries of Palestine and Egypt, including St. Catherine's in the Sinai. The rhythms struck on wood were soon vested with the oral memory of rhythmic blasts from earlier trumpets, an iconography of trumpeting that was eventually transferred to the Zivon of Russian bells. The joy shown at Constantinople on the occasion of the translation of the relics of St. Anastasius was shown by the beating of Zyla. In the life of St. Theodosius the Archimandrite, by John Moschus, one reads of some Eutychian monks of the party of Severus who, to disturb the saint at his devotion, beat the wood, at an unwanted hour. St. Sabas rose for his devotions, before the hour of striking. Larger and smaller samantra have been used, the smaller being sounded first, followed by the larger, then by those of iron. Theodore Balsaman, in a treatise on the subject, compares the sounding of the little, great and iron samantra to the preaching of the law and of the gospel, and the last trumpet. He also says that the congregations were summoned by three samantra in monasteries, and only by one large one in parish churches. Moreover, he emphasizes the persistence of the Samantron in the East as a symbolic manifestation of difference with the Latin West it remains unclear if some isolated practices in the West such as the Basque Solaparta are associated with the pre-schism liturgy. In Byzantium, the use of bells did not really gather momentum until after the Fourth Crusade, and at the fall of Constantinople Samantra still outnumbered bells by a 5 to 1 ratio. 
Samantra, from their size and shape, furnished formidable weapons, and were sometimes so used with fatal effect in a church brawl. One reason why Samantra continued to be used in southeastern Europe in particular is that the ringing of bells was outlawed during Ottoman times under Islamic rule, forcing monasteries to use the Samantron instead. The practice then became customary, though in Bulgaria it largely fell into disuse after independence. In Russia, the techniques for playing the bailo were retained in bell ringing rubrics, and it could still be heard in more remote, rural areas at the time of the revolution. Today, its use is restricted to the Altai region and Siberia, as well as old believer skets, the latter retaining the aloofness toward outsiders that has characterized the group since it broke away from the main body of the Russian Orthodox Church Also, a Samantron may be in use because the monastery cannot afford a bell. The Syrian Orthodox hold the Samantron in great veneration, based on an ancient tradition that Noah invented it. According to the story, God told him. Make for yourself a bell of box wood, which is not liable to corruption, three cubits long and one and a half wide, and also a mallet from the same wood. Strike this instrument three separate times every day, once in the morning to summon the hands to the ark, once at midday to call them to dinner, and once in the evening to invite them to rest. The Syriacs strike their samantra when the liturgy is about to begin and when it is time to summon the people to public prayer. Their tradition also links the sound of the wood to the wood of the Garden of Eden that caused Adam to fall when he plucked its fruit, and to the nailing to the wood of the cross of Jesus Christ, come to atone for Adam's transgression. References Bibliography Smith, William, and Cheatham, Samuel. A Dictionary of Christian Antiquities, p. 1879. Hartford, Connecticut, J. B. Burr, 1880.